Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I just want to do a uh, extensive tour and walkthrough of my latest release, the MKS Beluga. So this ship is really massive. Um, this tour is going to take a while. It's going to be a lengthy video, but if you stick around, I'm going to show you every little nook and cranny of this ship. It's going to be an interesting time and I'm going to show you exactly how to use everything. Hopefully you won't be confused after this whole video. Alright, so I'm going to start down here because that's most likely where you'll end up if you spawn the ship. Um, from here I'm going to go introduce the bridge a little bit just to help get you started with the ship and to help figure out everything that needs to be done to actually start all the engines and everything. So from here, there's many different paths to the bridge. I'm just going to take the fastest one either up here or down here. Close the door. I'll go through the interior later. For now, I'm just walking through to the elevator, which you can find. It's usually in the center of the ship, pretty much. Um, you can see there are two digits at the top. The left one is the current floor, and the right, the red one, is the desired floor. So if I hit call elevator, it's going to set the desired floor to three, which is the one that we're on. And you can see the elevator should start making its way up. Yep, two. It's gonna be a bit slow because uh, because of the size of the ship, the simulation speed is not the fastest, but we're gonna deal with that. Um, from here, we can see there are eight floors, a lot of them. Uh, right now we're on floor three. This is equipment bit, rooms, launch bays, cabins, and a theater. So what we're going to do for now is just going to go up to floor number seven, which or the G deck, bridge, navigation, crane control, everything like that. You can hit this button, doors are going to close, and this elevator is going to head up, 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 up towards deck seven. Now if you pay attention here, there's actually a magnet on the side, and when it gets to a desired floor, it's going to lock right there. That's in case of moving seas and stuff like that. A lot of times um, it's helpful to keep your elevator locked. So up on the bridge, you've got a few different um, areas out here. You have a couple of these little um, shelving units uh, useful for like storing files. You've got some more here in the back. You've got also some stuff. We'll go over that later. For now, what's important to know is that you have your main console right here with everything you need to drive the ship. You have a full walk around um, area right there with loads of little binoculars and night vision binoculars and radios and stuff like that. Um, up on here, you've got your water cannon seats. Each side has one. And on also each side, you've got uh, these little consoles. One is just for other systems and this one is the main one that you need to know for engines. So you're gonna to need to power it up to start it. It's gonna turn on. You'll get an engine stat screen as well as um, actually the ability to use these buttons now that it's powered on. So first thing we need to do, uh, let's just turn on fuel and uh, port and starboard fuel pumps for both of our engines. Now let's go into this keypad and let it idle our engines at around 10 RPS. Once we've got that typed in, we have like our set point for our PID to go ahead and adjust our engines and we have our fuel pumps on so what we can do now is start the compressors and watch the engines go up. Alright, so that was way too loud. I'm just going to turn down my volume there. But as you can see, our um, jet engines are now idling at around 10 RPS. So we can do now, the generator is automatic right now. What we can do is probably just engage it into manual, and that should give us a generator output, which should power up, yep, should power up uh, the electronics. Perfect. There we go. Around 9.8. Good. There we go. All right, perfect. So next thing we can do is head over to the main console, up in the pilot seat, and push the throttle. Sorry, got it powered up first. 
Power up the main console. Nudge the throttle to 0 0.5 around, which that's the same thing as around 10 RPS on this console. And then what you're going to do is you're going to transfer the port and the starboard throttle to the captain. Now what we have is this throttle lever is controlling both engines. So as you may notice right now, if I use WASD or the arrow keys, nothing will change with the thrusters. So what we need to do is actually use this link system. You've got two sets of uh, arrow keys. One is for each thruster, and there's two because there are two keypads you can use. You can use WASD or the arrow keys. So what I like to do is I just like to set all my thrusters to WASD. And that you'll see they turn on on the main screen for the thruster. And you can also set any one you want. Just any thruster you want to control individually will be linked to WASD keypad. You can see that one's already started to nudge a little bit. But it's not really going to move the ship a whole lot because the clutch is pretty much at zero. Um, what we can do though is we can engage all of them. And for some reason, yeah, because I must have hit the arrow key a little bit um, to start. But for now, if the clutch is at 30, pretty much equivalent to zero, nothing's going to happen. But we can nudge our clutch up to around 60, and the ship will start moving. Now, maybe we don't want it to move so fast just yet because we're in the port. But what we can do now is we can hit arrow keys, or not arrow keys, um, we can hit A and D to move. And you can see real time, we get updated information on where our thrusters are located, what kind of angle they're at. Right now, we are turning our ship around. This thing is very maneuverable, by the way. Because of that top front thruster, we get a lot more maneuverability and it get, gets a lot more stable when maneuvering and doing tight turns like this. So we're just gonna turn around and head out to sea. And that is pretty much it for actually starting the ship. Um, but if you want to follow along, I'll show every single feature here on the deck. So as you can see, if we'll start going through the monitors a little bit to explain what everything means. The center one just shows your speed in four different units of measurement. Main one is knots, meters per second, knots again, miles per hour, and kilometers per hour. We've got all those for you. This is the thruster display, shows the angle of your thrusters as well as the engagement of your clutch, which right now is pretty minimal. So we are kind of drifting along at a relatively slow and tame pace. All right, so if I turn off all these, you can see thrusters stop. I can do the same thing with my arrow keypad and the indicators for the clutch are actually located right here. So now if you could see if I put up the arrow, I'm just gonna bounce up and it's gonna give us power in our thrusters. So same way you would do that. The arrow keys also control thrusters, but I'm not gonna use those for now. Um, on the left of that, you have an autopilot screen, which I'll show how that functions a little later. Left of that, you have the engine screen, same one as on the other console, you've got RPS and temperature on there. On the right of the center, you have the main system screen, you have indicators for port fuel, starboard fuel. This is not applicable. We don't, don't have a third one here. Battery main, battery reserve, uh, all, both of them are full. And this one is also not applicable. Not also shows our heading, so in degrees, right down there. Next one is the, let me just hop into this seat. We got the map, fully touch screen. It starts on zero, zero, so you can hit reset and it will transport you to wherever you are. Uh, you can, if you hit reset, these two separate indicators will center on each other and you can zoom in or out and it will follow your ship. Now, if you move, uh, it'll actually keep the position of your ship but you, you'll be in like a spectator mode where you move around it and you can hit reset. Um, the right of that is just a camera, pretty basic if you need a large view onto something in front of your ship. So let's go and set a waypoint somewhere far. Um, that way we can sh I can show you all the functions of it with little lags. Let's set it around here. As far as that, that is 17 kilometers. Okay, that's not so bad. So let's enter a waypoint into here. As you can see, this orange strip here is for um, autopilot functionality right here. So 
So it's going to give the ship bearing relative to north, which is 214 degrees. It's going to give the waypoint bearing from north, which, yep, makes sense. It's pretty much straight down. Um, it's also going to give the waypoint bearing um, from the ship. So this is the difference between them. So the ship is facing, let's see which way it's facing. It's facing this way. Yep, 33 degrees. Sounds about right. Good. So now we can click hit waypoint, show waypoint on the map. And this is going to tell us where to go on the map. And again, if we go in spectator mode, it's going to give us like a little bit less of an opaque version of it. And if we reset back, it'll show us the path again. So to actually engage the autopilot, first of all, let's actually engage some thrust, right? Get that up to 70, sure. Get, get up to 20 knots. Um, not a bad speed to be doing. And I will engage the autopilot. And this will go ahead and spin us around relatively close to our waypoint. So this should diminish and diminish and diminish up until it's around zero, which hopefully it will do. And looks like it is doing right now. So that's a good thing. We're cruising 20 knots. Um, we have around 17 kilometers to go. So while we do that, I can show you some functions of the ship. So on the left side, you've got another seat of the main console. Here you've got the light settings, navigation lights, just the mast, tow light. Uh, that's one light behind the mast that turns yellow. And you've got deck lights, which pretty much lights up the deck of the ship. Any walking areas on it light, lights it up. Actually, I'll keep that off for now. There's also bay lights on either side where the rib is located and another empty bay. And last but not least, on the other side of the console, you've got a couple things as well. You've just got helipad lights, which if you turn them on, make a um, pattern for the helicopter to land on, as well as bridge heaters, which just heat the bridge and they're right there. You can see that. Turn that back off. Aside from that, you've got a couple more indicators. You've got the clutches that I already showed port starboard RPS of each engine, you've got compass ball there, and you've got your main anchor controls right here, so you've got the length, up, down, and the magnet at the bottom. You've also got a switch uh, to the backup battery in case you need it, but aside from that, that is pretty much what the main console is used for. On the port console, you have a couple other things. You have temperature, RPS, right, the standard stuff, option to kill each engine. Um, you've got the generator, which should be running right now. Throttles are transferred over there. I should not be using no, that's, that was my mistake. That was actually getting a lot of electricity out of the system because the engines use medium motors to start faster. My mistake. Um, generator override, yep, RPS, that was all set. This is just fuel consumption stuff here. Um, it doesn't really go that quick or linearly I should say because this stays at a constant number and then it like <clears throat> and then it drops down very suddenly so you, you don't get you don't get a very like constant uh, liters per second or flow rate but you can still see your percentage fuel level and uh, this should pretty much last you forever the ship has an insane amount of fuel and for just two jet engine combustion chambers which should pretty much last until the end of time you'll probably be okay. This console, pretty basic. Um, you've got four cameras. You can see them better in the daytime. Same system screen that you have over there. Shows your heading. Um, you've got another set of anchors which are actually on the rear of the ship, so you can drop those with the magnet and get that up and down and see the length. And you've got the bilge pumps, which zero means um, automatic for now, so they will turn on if there's any water in the locked section of a room. Cycle to one, they'll turn off. Cycle to two, they'll turn on. Cycle back to zero, they're automatic. Perfect, we can probably power that down. We don't need that for now. All right, let's go, let's set the time to something a little better than that. 
I'm gonna go hop in this pilot seat, and these are the water cannon controls on each side of uh, the bridge. So what you need to do to start it, hit activate water cannon, and there's a really powerful water cannon that sprays really far. So this should help with putting out fires and everything. This really goes real far. And it controls pretty much with the seat, so it kind of immersed in that. It also has a spotlight, so you can link the spotlight, and the spotlight will also move with the water cannon, so if you're shooting at someone in the dark, you know what to do. Oops. Current time, set that up. Hello? There we go. And we can turn that off. Perfect. So, other same story on the other side of the bridge. You've got the water cannon there. Uh, you've got a little walkthrough here, as I mentioned. Some rails, grab handles. Same thing here. If you walk further back, you've got a couple little cabinets here, as well as a seat in the back. And this is actually to control the crane, so you have the same exact uh, operator controls as inside the crane cab. Uh, you've got backlights, and you've got a boom camera, which shows you uh, the end of the crane. You've also got cable up and down, and you've got the ship roll and ship pitch in degrees. As you can see, we're pitching up quite a bit now because of the third thruster, which, um, when activated, really pulls the nose of the ship up. And to counteract that, you could take off the third thruster from WASD, and you can see the ship settles down into the water quite a little more. We're way straighter now than we were before, but for speed's sake, you can get that forward thruster up, and it will tilt the whole ship up. But for now, actually, since I'm going to do the interior, go ahead and turn that off. I don't really need that. 16 kilometers? All right, perfect. We should be in good shape. So, now I'm going to start the main tour of the actual interior of the ship. Start all the way on the first deck and go up all the way until um, the top deck, which is the helipad. So first deck, fuel tanks, systems, and storage. You can see the elevator shaft is quite long. You've got a little hatch up there to escape if you need. You've got a ladder to climb all the way up there, and you've got windows on every floor showing you where to go. It's quite a long ride down to the first floor because um, this ship is pretty tall. We've got quite a distance to cover. So, first floor, very, very basic. Not much you can do in here. It just shows you fuel combined, fuel in the port and starboard tanks, and fuel in starboard capacity. The ship spawns at 95% capacity in both tanks, and as you can probably tell, above me is a series of pumps that move the fuel to either tank based on which way the ship is pitching. So right now the valves are off because the ship pitch is not great enough to require um, readjusting with the fuel. We've got some uh, normal storage spaces. And up here you have the main bow hold, just a not finished area with some batteries, is what it is. Let's head up to deck two. Deck two is a little more um, populated. There's actually some stuff on deck two. Let's go ahead into the engine room. You've got some um, generators on either side, as well as the main engines right here. It's not it doesn't look great in here. Um, I didn't spend too much time, you know, prettying everything up. But these things give you insane power and insane uh, insane efficiency at that amount of power. You can go back here and check the amount of torque that's being generated, which is crazy. It's off the charts, 12,000 torque for like pretty much zero fuel. On this side, you've got the same thing. Bilge pumps over there, generators, um, another engine, pretty much standard. Now, if we go up this way, we can actually head into the first floor of the ship or first cabin floor at least. You've got corridor lights in here, and you've got some cabin. Before I go in them, I just want to say a big thank you to CoolG2007 for helping me with the interior of this ship. You did a really great job 
he did every uh, little cabin and every like nice area. The bridge I did myself and most of the other stuff I did myself, but all these cabins and living areas and stuff was his work. So I'm really grateful to him for helping me out with this because this is a big project. Uh, let's start with the starboard cabins. You could just see storage room lights in here. Nothing really that special. We just decided to put a storage room right here because it might be too loud to put a cabin right beside the engine room. You've got a basic <clears throat> cabin with a bed, a nightstand, and a clock. Same thing here. Another cabin, a little bit different shape, but you've got the same kind of amenities with the bed and the clock. Exact same thing on the other side. And at the bow, you've got a fully equipped gymnasium which is kind of cool. You've got a rowing machine, bench press, treadmill, um, kind of oversized dumbbell, dumbbell, I guess. Those might be two plates, but that bar is very short, for sure. It's lockers, uh, just some normal gym stuff in there. Let me just turn off the lights because that will reduce the lag significantly. Let's go ahead back. I have one more thing to show you before we leave this floor. Hold on. This is supposed to be the main engine room. I got some screens in here, but likely I probably won't finish this. Um, it's too much work to be done right here, so I'm just going to leave this part how it is. Probably I'm not going to do too much more here. Originally, I thought was to do like security camera screens right here and some more monitors, but I don't know if I have the guts to finish that right now, honestly already worked on this ship quite a bit so instead I'll just keep going through the main engine control center these are your motors that start uh, the engines in the front of the ship or not in the front in the middle of the ship in the engine room you've got some fire extinguishers here you've got a passcode right here so the passcode should be one two three four and oh that is actually watertight right because that is where the side anchors are for the stern of the ship there's two front anchors two side anchors on the back on the front and this is where the anchors are contained so i wouldn't recommend actually opening those doors walk through here this is where the diesel is stored on board the ship some fuel tanks don't mind the little um rope thing at the top that i will show you what that's used for later Right here you've got the main hold of the ship, pretty much a huge space that contains um, some equipment and some little lowering, uh, lowering decks that go all the way up to the top, and I'll show you how they lower once we actually get to the main deck of the ship. But all you need to know for now is that this is where some of the um, electronics and systems are stored. All right, let's move on to a little bit more of a finished deck. This deck is kind of just sad. It's not, not, not that much going on in it, but let's head over to a deck that has a little more going on. Deck three, this is where the launch bays are. Um, to the side of each hallway, you can see a door, and this actually has a walkout into each bay, which has a little safety thing there, and some controls for the main like boat harnesses that go out and can retrieve a rib. It also has some um, little sticky out parts that hold the ship and it's also got some tie downs in case you want to use uh, the cable that's provided here to tie down a boat or something. Same exact thing on the other side except here you've actually got the boat that spawns in. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to show you how that'll go in the water. Perfect. Okay, so now that I've slowed down the ship, I can actually lower these down. Lower, 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 lower. We can lower them down to about the level of... There we go. Perfect. And now we can hit. Good. So all of them should be connected, if I'm not mistaken. Now what we can do is we can hit up. That's going to winch our little creation, our boat, up out of the holding rows. And we can then hit out, and that will drag it along. And it should pop out, just missing the side of the ship by a hair. 
right there and lower it like so. Now I don't have time to lower it all the way, so I'm just going to disconnect it, let it fall, raise this, and pull them back in. Let's hop on board this little ship, this little guy. This is my 27 foot orca rib, We've got a couple outboards in the back, pretty basic design, water cannon, seats. Um, before you go in here, make sure to turn on the engine electric. Once you hop in here, there's some controls listed. Um, you've got drive, neutral, and reverse, so to switch to drive, hit 2, it's going to start automatically. And all I have to do is just hold down the W key and my speed will increase. Steer with AD, obviously. You've got some autopilot settings on here, as well as some lights and stuff like that. Heaters, GPS coordinates. I'm not going to go over this boat too much, um, just because you guys probably don't really care and uh, not really a point of this video. But either way, pretty fast boat. I know it's a little bit slow right now because of the simulation speed of the main vessel, but this thing actually does some, does some pretty good speed. You can get up pretty high and is actually quite capable in big waves because it's not a small boat. In the bays, you can also go into the, yeah, you can see from here, you can also come into this room, which this is the locker room, same on both sides of the vessel. You can come in here, various lockers here, once again, made by Cool G 2007. You can see you've got some basic storage units here, windows, we can see that boat far off in the distance. Got some pipes, windows out onto the main deck, which looks to be quite cool. Fire extinguisher, lights, more sort of locker thingies. In the middle of the two locker bays, you've got like a little waiting room with the elevators. On the other side, similar thing, locker slash shower place. Got some stalls in here for the crew. Same thing goes back around the elevator right there, and this will go out to the launch bay. From here, you can either exit this side onto the main deck, or this side onto the main deck. As you remember, we came in through here when I walked into the ship. That's pretty much that for this side of the deck. Let's go back and explore the other side. You may be wondering what's in here. This is just a stairwell. Pretty basic. Uh, I might add actually some rails before I upload it, but pretty much just a stairwell. You've got um, some more sophisticated cabins in here. Lights, you've got a bigger sort of room, a chair, a bed, and even a window, which is a privilege. Same thing here and same thing here. No window though this time. Oh, whoops. There we go. And on this front of the ship, on this level, you've actually got a movie theater. So this is quite nice. Cool G did a very good job with this. I love the colors. I love that the ceiling color kind of comes down a couple blocks instead of just one. We've got some nice, what looks to be like almost lazy boy chairs here and a big screen out on the front. Turn off the lights, and let's head back. Same thing around here, same exact cabins on this side of the ship, and that is pretty much deck three. Now it's up to deck four. Whoops, that was deck six. Deck four, I'm gonna head up one deck, and now we're sort of above the main work deck of the ship, so this is getting higher and higher. Up here you've got a little bit of a nice viewing hallway, some seats and some plants out of both um, launch bays. You can see the boat over there, still vibing like never before. And you've got the same stairwell in the middle, washrooms to either side. Did a nice job with these, got some windows out there. This is just the exit out onto the rib bays as well. You can walk down these stairs and you'll be down there. Same exact thing on the other side. Now you've got the cabins as well. This is a double cabin, so you've got two beds in here. 
no window, but still pretty spacious, as well as this other cabin as well. Similar stuff you've got here than all, all the other ones. All the other decks have cabins as well, stuff like this. Now, special thing about this deck is that you have access to the more premium cabins. If you go onto the stairwell and you come this way to the front, you can actually see there is a little hallway here, a little meeting room, and you have access to the two more prestigious cabins on board the ship. So on here, you've got nice bed with a full closet, full desk with a computer. Um, this is pretty much meant for the captain and first officer of the ship. Um, so no regular crewmates would be in these cabins, but these are quite elegant. You close that. Let's go and head backwards on deck four, actually, and there's some, some other stuff to show you. Past the elevator, you've got the main utility rooms. So in here, you have the med bay, which is very important. Got a little, got nice views out of the med bay for sick patients to enjoy, you know, the scenery. You've got beds, obviously, all this equipment. None of this stuff works, but it's there for effect. Lots of equipment here in the med room and uh, an exit to the main deck. Same thing on the other side, except it's not in a med bay. In this case, we have an office on the other side. This is useful for um, in a connection to the internet, so crew members can actually contact um, people on land, and they can do some sort of like work stuff from here. They have a little printer, computers, filing cabinets, and lots of other stuff, as well as the same exit out onto the main deck. Let's head up to deck five, and this is the most important deck probably in the ship. Um, on this deck, you can see restaurant, galley, anchor room, and cabins. Not really an anchor room anymore. I changed it to more of just an observing room because the anchors um, were, actually got moved further below the ship. But regardless, here you've got some washrooms, bigger ones this time. And you go around, and then you've got these stairs, which we'll go up later, all the way around again. And you've got a little exit as well on either side, which stairwell down to the main deck again. And on the sides, you've actually got these kind of rooms here. And it's not a room, it's the exit to the outside of the ship. And outside, you've got this little protected area. Even though it's outside exposed to the elements, you're not exactly exposed to everything. So you've got the pump there, and you've got a staircase, and you can sort of come out and all the way down onto the main deck. This also heads upwards towards, the, not the top deck, but the deck six, which is the lounge area. And you can come back through here, windows, very nice galley, kitchen area for the crew to relax and enjoy a meal. some corridor lights here. Through here you've got um, some more decorated stuff, decorated interior stuff. You've got a kitchen, so this is the galley. On both sides of the ship actually you've got a double one here. So in each one you've got storage for food, refrigerator space, and oven, so this is for serving food. The main restaurant slash dining area. Out here you've got a nice little focal point, a little view up top, and from here you can actually go into each cabin, there's more cabins through here, same thing on the other side of the ship, exact same thing, cabins, and through the end of the stairwell, you can actually head to the front of the ship, which has a nice little room for pretty much nothing at the front. From here you can just observe stuff. Used to be the anchor room, changed that, but for now this is just an empty room for observing.
Let's head up to... Well, we won't take the elevator anymore from now on. Let's take the stairs, actually, up into the main deck. Or not the main deck, the next deck. Now, uh-oh, I forgot to turn these lights off. That's why. Let's turn off the lounge lights. There we go. Got a little better FPS now. So in here, this is the main lounge of the area. You've got a lot of seating, a lot of tables, a lot. Even got, even got a bar here. It looks like a bar. Um, seating area around a TV, as well as storage rooms, and a little exit to the balcony. The other side doesn't have this balcony, it's just got a washroom instead. So as you can see, washroom, no balcony, just a window. Through here you've got just some normal seating and a nice, nice view onto the main deck. And up we go onto the bridge which I've already talked about. So, that pretty much concludes the interior of the ship. I'm going to show you how to use some of the features now, features that, already, that I haven't already showed you, um, as well as tour the final helipad, which there's not much to tour around there. It's just one small area. Let's call the elevator to deck 7, and it will come upwards. 6, good, and 7. Perfect. Let's head upwards to deck 8. And this should take us above the bridge to the heli deck, which is quite high actually on the ship. Up here you've got a little walk around. Very nice views from here. Just some regular winches up down to carry that cable. You've got a pump station for diesel, jet fuel, and electricity. These all work and ready to refuel anything, any creation you've got on here. Got a lot of rope anchors around the helipad, as well as more tie downs for any sort of craft that you would have on here. So, pretty useful place, the helipad. It's quite big too, should fit most helicopters without issue. Alright, so now that we're down here on the main deck, I'm going to show you a bit how everything on here works. First thing being the winch, this thing is very easy. Magnets drag this around and you can also release and tighten the connection. It goes quite fast. So pretty much for pulling anything, just like a tugboat, you got a big winch in case you need it. Go ahead and put that back a little bit. Perfect. Oh, oops. That should be attached. Alright, now let's head up to the crane. This thing is relatively easy to hop up into. I have to do climb the ladder, stand to the side a little bit because the door might push you. Open the door, come in here. A lot of first person equipment storage. Up into the crane operator seat. There is little room here, more storage, some outfits. You've got lights. And this will actually turn on the spotlight at the top. So this can be very useful for seeing what you're picking up. In the day though, you don't really need it. Seating on each side, turn on backlights, and we can also turn on the boom camera, which shows us a view from the um, camera or the actual massive crane end that we have there. So first thing we gotta do, probably should lift this up because it's looking a little bit down right now. So the control for that is up and down arrow keys would lift the boom up and down. As you can see, when I do that, these top things also rotate, which is meant to mimic the um, ropes being tightened. And as you can see, boom comes up. And what we actually get is a nice view of the deck from here. So this is the this is a camera that's kind of a little higher up, and this is the camera that's right there, down, right there, right on the magnet. And this gives us a really good view of what we're picking up on a big screen. So what we want to do now, we can actually use WASD to move our crane outwards. Once we have it out, we can use the arrow keys to rotate it as well. 
It takes a little bit of time, but it's a big crane, so can't make it too quick, or else it'll throw off the balance of the whole ship. Now the ship should balance fairly well, just because it's got a stabilizer, an active stabilizer, as well as the fuel tank system that makes sure that the ship is not listing. Even if the crane to the side, the ship will be fairly stable. First thing, let's pick up the basic magnet, so we can use D to move a little bit over. What I'm going to do now is actually to demonstrate how this works, I'm going to hop out of the main chair and I'm going to actually go into the crane operator's room in the bridge. So here I can do the same thing and what I'm going to do now is lower the boom. Now this process is going to be a little tricky. Um, so you got to adjust. I find sitting in the crane operator seat in the bridge to be a little easier because you have a better viewpoint. So I'm going to go once again move my crane back a little bit. Seems like it's too far forward. Once I'm happy with that, I can lower it a tad. Looks good. I'm going to use the home shortcut right now, but you guys can obviously hop out and climb onto the deck by yourselves. Um, I'm going to take this electric cable anchor, hook it onto the crane, and I'm going to hook it onto whatever device I want to grab. In this case, being this magnet. Whoops. Now I'm going to go back into the bridge. And what I'm going to do... Uh-oh. Now that's pulling it. I'm going to center this a little better like that. So what that cable does is it sends an electric signal to the other magnet. It's going to let it connect actually. Press hit one. There we go. So as you can see, one is the hot key for the large magnet. And I could, what I can do now is pretty much lift this little attachment up. Now to actually activate the magnets on the end of this, you can just hit 4, and all of them activate. Perfect. This is just the basic attachment. You just have magnets on the side of this. I'm going to go ahead and detach it, actually, because we want to use the other ones as well. So I'll just set this down somewhere, preferably. Okay, I'll move it back a little more. Now I'm going to demonstrate a little bit cable going down, actually, because I don't want to only use the boom. Once that's around, yeah, it's pretty close to the ground. You can just dis disconnect that. Use the home shortcut once more to uh, grab the cable, store it for now, and I'm going to grab the next attachment. Next attachment is, uh, is going to be the claw, which is more of a logging uh, crane sort of thing, but I put it on this boat anyways, just in case you need to pick up any sort of goods. It's a pretty big claw, so as you can see, it's this yellow one right here. We're going to go ahead and try to pick that up now. Wait for this to winch a little further up, because I don't want it to swing too much. Then again, I'm going to go forward a little bit, and adjust... Yeah, adjust my crane sort of to where that claw is positioned. There we go, that's looking okay. Move forward a little more. Lower the boom. Uh oh, might be too far forward. That should, that, should, that looks good. Alright, so, that's not so bad. Let's get just over to the side a little bit. Uh oh. With these ropes, it's a little bouncy, but the ropes are quite strong, so this crane should be able to lift quite a bit. Alright, so what I'm going to do now, hop out, same thing, attach the cable to a cable anchor, which is right there. Hop back into my little seat, and I'm going to go left, turn magnets on and wait for them to connect. 
hopefully. Perfect. Got it to connect, and now there's a data connection established between the crane and the claw. So I'm going to go ahead and yank the claw out. There we go. Perfect. Awesome. So, to operate the claw, you can see on my seat controls, there's labeled 2 open claw and 3 for shut claw. So, that's exactly what you think it is. Open claw is going to be 2. Shut claw is going to be 3. So, let's go and disconnect this, the claw. Go ahead and put that right back where it belonged. Um, and let's grab the third and final attachment, which is the container holder. Put that back in there. Perfect. Fits nice and good. Good. Let's hit one, and let's disconnect from here. And store the cable. Nice. Then let's head on over to... the um, container holder. All I have to do is move the crane sideways. Perfect. This one's not going to take too long. Cable. Attach. Attach. Awesome. And let's hit one and lower. There we go. Awesome. Let's connect pretty seamlessly. Let's take this up. And as you can see, the connectors on this one are electric connectors, so toggling four, or the magnet toggle, will actually just toggle the release on these. So it'll automatically grab the container. If you hit four, it'll release. Hit four again, it won't release. Perfect. Got the crane working. Now, if you plan to actually um, lift a bunch of containers and place them on the deck of this ship, there's a couple things you should know. Let me just move this in here first. Awesome. That's going to be stored in there. That's one way to that's one way to secure it. Perfect. Wasn't too hard. If you're going to store containers on here, there's a couple things you should know. Firstly, that these buttons release the center container, port container, and starboard container. If you hit them right same thing in the back you've got another set of buttons for port container starboard container and center container release that releases that releases these sets of four electro connectors the other thing is that um, these actually these sections move down so if I hit midsection down it'll move this whole midsection down Huh? I'm sorry, what? There we go. Perfect. This whole midsection will move down all the way to the bottom. It'll stick to the bottom. It should stick. There we go. Perfect. And this gives you the ability to stack containers. So instead of being able to carry three, you can carry six. <clears throat> and same thing for the other one, although it doesn't go down just quite as far the aft section down. It just goes on just on top of the batteries, but that still effectively uh, gives you a lot more space. And this one, there's a couple ladders to step down like that. So that gives you quite a bit more room to work with um, containers, specifically. To get them up, same procedure. Hold and wait for them to get up. And they will lock at the top automatically. Perfect. Also got some little hatches to get down there. And you've got your little um, toe sort of back end for lines and stuff like that. So thank you for watching everyone. That's pretty much it for the tour of the ship. I know some areas might have been a little disappointing because not everything is complete, but this was, this took a hell of a long time to make. And uh, certain areas, yeah, I, couldn't, I just couldn't push myself to finish them. And plus I've got another project that I'm starting now either way, which I hope to finish a little more than this one. But the important part is, 
I'm putting Toad in the workshop. It's 99% done. Everything seems to be working just fine. It's going to be hopefully very useful because it has a crane, helipad, rib bays, everything you could possibly want in the world of Stormworks. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one.